What's up, people? Good day, good morning, good evening. I pray that we're not just being hearers of the word, but doers of the word, applying the word to our lives. So welcome to Study Verses. And today's study verses are, or is, Proverbs 14, 12. And we're going to be reading from the Amplified Bible and the NLT, otherwise known as the New Living Translation. And today I'm going to talk about the concept of discernment. But first, let's talk about the scripture. Proverbs 14, 12, it reads, There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but its end is the way of death. And that's the Amplified. And then from the NLT, it says, There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. So what's it talking about? It's talking about what choices are you making in life? Are you making the wrong choices? Because the Bible declares that the wages of sin is death. So what does that mean? That means literally the wages of, of the failure to walk in righteousness, the failure to walk in God's ways, the failure to walk in God's path leads to death in that area, it leads to death in that area. So for example, as I always preach on the street, if I'm not faithful to God in the in the area of my uh, relationships or the area of my finances, then I should expect to see death in that area. And then on an eternal level, what are the wages of sin if we don't repent? It's death, eternal separation from God. Death isn't just, you know, death in the flesh, like our flesh dies and we pass away. No, true death is separation from the Most High God, which is hell, Sheol, the place of the dead. So, what was it say? There is a path before each person that seems right to a man, but it ends in death. So, we must be wise when we're approaching situations and that needs discernment. What's discernment? Discernment is the ability to understand between right and wrong, to, tr to intrinsically understand which direction to go in order to honour God. So... I did a little bit of writing here. It says, you need wisdom and discernment to locate the will of God in the midst of qualifying options and alternatives. Wrong choices in the end have destructive and fatal consequences. So there's going to be many, you know, opportunities. There's going to be many choices you can make in life, many directions you should go. But you need to know what direction you should go. You need to know what direction you should take. You need to know what direction is the right direction for you to go. And how do you know that? Through the study of the word of God. It's only through the word of God we can understand the will of God. And why? Because the will of God is the word of God. And the word of God is the will of God. And you know what? The mind of Christ is found. You know where the mind of Christ is found? In the words. It says here. If we make decisions based on our own wants, selfish desires or worldly ideals, we will find failure. We must first follow God's will. When making choices in life, ministry and business, when we are faced with two viable choices, we must pray in the Holy Spirit so God may reveal his will in the given situation. So first and foremost, if, if you know, we have a decision to make and it doesn't line up with the word of God, you can't be making that decision. We've all been there. Sometimes the easiest decision, or most of the time, should I say the majority of the time, the easiest decision is the wrong decision. And oftentimes the harder road to take is the right decision to make. Why? Because if you're in the area of finances, if you're in the area of business, if you're just trying to make money, you're trying to get by, often people will come to you with quick choices, you know, and, and the way that seems right to a man is to go for this, you know, quick money, this quick success. But ultimately, that's not God's way. Why? Because ulti ultimately, this quick success, this quick way of making money it normally comes from a place of sin. It normally comes from a place of negativity. It normally comes from a place of conning or scamming people. And ultimately, that plants seeds that leads to our destruction. Why? Because as we know, and as I always say, every word and action we take here on this earth plants a seed that leads to the fruit of our future. In other words, it, it plants a seed that leads to the manifestation of our future. And that can be either positive or negative. It can be either positive or negative. So we don't have a we don't have a choice. It's going to come about, but we can choose what we want to manifest. What sort of fruit do we want to produce in our lives? We want to produce godly fruit, righteous fruit, connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ, or do we want to stay connected to the enemy? Do we want to connect to the world? Do we want to connect to our flesh? Do we want to connect to the devil and produce bitter, disgusting fruit that leads to a worse future? Now that's up to you. You got to make that decision. That's why it's important to have discernment. If we make the wrong decision, it leads to destructive and fatal consequences, but at least a suffering, not only in this life, but the life to come. So we must base all our decisions upon the word of God. And how, how do we know that? We study the word of God, as I said. So if we have decisions that are both in line with the word of God, and we don't know what direction to take, and no direction is necessarily, necessarily destructive, 
And then we got to pray in the spirit. What is praying in the spirit? We pray in tongues. We pray to God. We petition God and ask him, you know, which path seems right? Because both paths before me, Lord, seems right. But I need to know which one you, you want me to take. Will you give me a sign? There's no, there's, there's no harm in asking God. You don't have to make every decision yourself. Always look to ask God first what direction I should go in making a decision. And over time, he'll give you confirmation and he'll indicate which path you should take. And then take that path. Because the path to your success and the path to your victory... Is taking the path which God designed and designated for you to take. So, my apostle, Apostle Omar, he was talking about the difference between, you know, tigers and lions. And that just comes about from Proverbs 14, 12. It was to do with another scripture, but I can apply it to this. And the law of discernment. Basically, in the New Testament, obviously, we know Jesus is described as the lion of, of, the, of the tribe of Judah. And however, we know what lions are. Lions are pack animals. They're pack hunters. They hang in a group. They go out and achieve things together in, 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 in a tribe, in a pack, in a group. Whereas a tiger is a more solo hunter. It goes out doing things in solely. It goes out doing things in a singular way. It goes hunts by itself. Whereas, whereas lions, they hunt together as a pack in order to take down prey. However, when we approach our lives, when we're making decisions, often it seems that the way that seems right to us, often in the body of Christ, it seems, it seems the way that seems right to us is to go out and use our skills, our talents, our abilities in business, in ministry, in life. In order to benefit ourselves, but that's a way that leads to destruction. That's a way that leads to bitterness, selfishness, and greed. And when we when we apply them things to our life, it will plant seeds that leads to a more negative future, and it will take us further out of the presence and will of God. Why? Because God is a selfless God and not a selfish God. So how do we how do we how do we experience you know the fullness of the blessing from the presence of God? Is we behave like Jesus Christ. And how did Jesus Christ behave? He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and he behaved like a lion. He went out there and achieved stuff. With his 12 disciples, they went out there as a group. In fact, Jesus Christ, God, he could have achieved anything he wanted without working with human beings, but he chose to work with human beings. And even in the fleshly form, he decided to work with the 12 disciples in order to make his mission and accomplish his mission. He, he chose to work with us. He chose to work through us. And he's still doing the same thing today. So we need to choose not only to work with God, but we also need to choose to work with other people and bless other people through our talents, through our skills, our, through, our, through our abilities. So when we're discerning which way to go, choose to work with other people, other godly people, God-fearing people who are going the right direction. Choose to, you know, to work with people in order to push yourself forward in life, in ministry, in business. So it says here, you know, so let's go over what I said earlier. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to, to a man, but it ends in death. So if something seems correct to you, but it doesn't align with the Bible, you need to reject it. And oftentimes, you know, going the solo path, going, you know, the path of the world, the path the enemy wants to take us, that's going to take us to destruction. We need to choose to sacrifice, to be selfless and not selfish, using our gifts and our talents to build a team or even support another leader being a part of a team because that's what God wants us to behave. That's how God wants us to behave. He wants us to behave in an orderly fashion. You know, God is not a God of disorder. There's a hierarchy to things. Me, myself, I'm, I'm a junior minister. So I serve my leaders in church in the UK. I serve my mentors here in the UK. And I take instructions from my mentors in the US. Why? Because there's an orderly structure to things. And you need to follow that orderly structure. Yes, you know, <clears throat> I can preach. I can pray. I can do all these things. I can prophesy sometimes. There's a way that seems right to a man. The way that seem, would seem right to me is for me to go out and do my own ministry, to go out and just abandon my mentors and use my own giftings. However, that's the path that ends in death. That's the path that ends in destruction. That's the path that ends in failure. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in death. And when you follow God's way, when you follow the selfish way, when you follow the way of humility and not pride, it leads to prosperity that lasts. So if you're looking to make quick money, doing quick things, you're only ever going to find destruction, but choose to follow God and it will take you step by step in life. In Jesus' name, be a lion. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Peace.